We have Toddless, the Toddless Todd, Beardless Todd here. And today's project, we are going on our fourth year in a row, like I said in the parts video of um, front end jobs. And the 2000 Chevy Impala, sister Amy's car, Ant on the Move, uh, 100,000, 103,000 miles needs struts. And we're going to do front tie rod ends, new lower control arms from Detroit Axle and struts all around so gonna go ahead and jack it up we are going to do this side first we got the best lighting here so i'm going to pull apart this side reinstall and then um, get bear to help me on that side get him into the mix a little bit so first off we're going to go ahead and jack it up we got the dewalt impact we can take the wheel off with so we'll get started with that and see what all is needed trying to decide what all we need to take apart here for the brakes <laughs> whether we need to uh, um, take the strut first and let the brakes hang or do the lower control arm first so I haven't decided yet on uh, what's the best option there but we're going to take a look and find out and I'll let you know hello everybody so we went ahead and jacked it up here. We'll see how that works. And there might be a better spot, but that's what we chose to do. So, here we go. Now, got plenty of light using our LED there from uh, our Hitachi LED and our LED strip light there from uh, Harbor Freight. So here's what we got. And it actually looks pretty good. See, I don't see any reason to replace the uh, uh, this at the moment. I'm trying to kind of look where that steering link will be. That's going to be fun. But anyways, so we're going to do the uh, inner tire, outer tie rods. I'm not going to mess with the inner because I tried that in the Firebird. I don't think it's worth the, the trouble. Uh, and I don't think the inner tie rods are really an issue on the car at the moment, so we'll see if I'm right. But you can see these have kind of lived their life. It's just kind of kind of a clunky, <clears throat> clunky drive now. So there are the strut assemblies. Okay. So looking forward to getting those on. Not sure what all that is. That's weird. Hmm. Okay. So what it looks like we're going to do. This is what I wasn't sure about. We've got a nice aluminum knuckle here. And I wasn't sure whether we wanted to, you know, drop out the uh, strut first or go ahead and just take this off, you know, do everything together. And I think that's what we're going to do because it looks like I can hang the caliper uh, probably up here. Just hang it that way. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a look and see what actually works. What, it might work out better just to uh, unbolt our strut here loosen it from the top <clears throat> and I'd kind of like to go without pulling off the um, the hub if I could without pulling this out I think that's possible because we should just be able to rock out yeah like oh. no, that's not a good thing e just a little bit so one thing that might be in the way with that is getting our tie rod end bolted back down that might be the issue with that idea. That's, yeah. So trying to, just looking at what's the best way to do all that. Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get back with you once I figured out which way. Not the motorcycle. But yeah, we gotta get our, we gotta get our uh, bolt out here for the, ball joint and that's pretty tight so gonna loosen this pull that off there's our bolt for the both control arms there gonna pop all these out for the new arm to go in so yeah we're probably gonna be safer everything will probably need to come apart and one thing I forgot to do is loosen this on the ground so we'll have to uh, <clears throat> we'll have to take the impact and see and I believe that's 35 if I'm correct so, yeah. All right, mumbling here. Once I get some more good information, I'll let you know. 
All right, so we got some tools and we got sort of a game plan. So we'll see what we can uh, see what we can figure out here. Got Blimey Cow going on in the uh, background there. So all right, I need 15 deep well. That worked out great. The 15? Oh, the 15. Okay, okay, okay. Run the impact on that. All right, we'll go ahead and spray our ball joint here a little bit. See if that'll help. I'm gonna go ahead and try to knock off the um, our uh, tie rod in here. What size is this? What size are you, my friend? All right, so there we go. Our 18 for here. We'll try the uh, try the old socket first before going the quick wrap. All right. That wasn't so bad. So these are old, old tie rod ends. So we'll get the bolt here at the bottom and then try to tap it out. And that'll give us some room. Now remember, you don't wanna, if you got good tie rod end stuff, you just wanna tap the shoulders about so. Oh, but see, that worked out pretty good. So you don't really want to, if it's new parts, you don't want to tap here or here. You want to tap about right there. So, but for really stubborn stuff, you know, you can go ahead. Yeah, see that's, bah, 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 bah. needs to be replaced. We'll go ahead and just pull him off. Oh, that's moving. Well, that's, that's not good. The whole, the whole thing's moving. I don't want to mess up my inner. Don't want to mess up the inner. So we'll see. Let's see here. What size we got? I have to clamp that down and try to get it off. Just trying to figure out what I can get rid of out of the way here. So let's see. We can get right, right there. There we go. And then I'll grab something to hold. So, see if we, if, if it's possible. All right, let's go ahead and start with this view here. See if he wants to come on. I have a feeling I might be going the wrong way. Ah. Okay, that's tight. Not this tight. Okay, that was easier. I like that. And this is how you get your transmission mount if you need to. That looks fun. Alright, so we're moving down here, so we can put a rack here. But yeah, that's definitely the easiest with a, um, if you got an old torque wrench or a big breaker bar. That seems to be the easiest, easiest way to do it. For my first timing experience, I need to remove one of these two. Okay. Back here, so it's out of the way. Alright. I'm going to pull this one all the way out. It looks like the adjustments here are pretty straightforward. I don't think we really have to, um, there's no slot, you know, for the alignment. So, I mean, there's a lot less moving parts on here, which has been one of the selling points for front wheel drive cars for years. But yeah, there's definitely a lot, a lot less moving, moving parts here than a, uh, a truck. Be careful for that. There's a little, there's a little movement there to wallow out, but not, not too much. All right, so that one's out. Now we just kind of need to figure out if our, uh, so there's that. We got this hanging in by a bolt. So we kind of need to figure out a way to 
support this and to make sure our uh, ball joint is indeed out, which I'm not sure it should be, but I'm not sure if it's out here. 18 inch or 18 millimeter, 21 millimeter. We had some trouble waiting for this bolt to get out because of the aluminum and the steel, I believe. So we waited, finally got that, and it's finally kind of driving out slowly. Well, and part of that is it's splined. I didn't know that. Huh. Wonder why you run a spline bolt through there. That's weird. Well, I hope I'm doing this right. I should have checked the videos of other people, but I forgot. So that's why it was coming out so hard. That's very interesting. Oh, huh. never seen that. I haven't, like I said, I haven't done too much front end work on uh, front wheel drive. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. I guess I can stop yelling and take these out. So that's our next stop. I think those are 13s, maybe. Let's see. And we're already pretty out of uh what's the word i'm looking for we're already got it kind of pretty loose here so we just need to finish it off Let's see. oops yeah. where's that connector oh yeah there you are all right, all right. it's going a little bit slower than i thought but I think that's just normal for this type of stuff. Where's that ratchet? Oh. At least that's normal. Looking for the tools. Alright. So we're going to pull out here. Put my bolt or nut on that. Alright. on that that's a good idea all right here we go there's an og og strut and look that worked out kind of nice and that's our our shim there pretty cool i think i remembered where it was i think it was about like so of course now i'm like no i don't remember but that's where we're going to go get in line so by going with the the complete i don't have to take this part I don't have to replace this unit, or this, or the strut, or the bushing. Everything's just done. You know, so that's that's pretty nice. So, all right, hang in there, and we'll be back. All righty, so here's some new one. Got some new nuts to go with it. So we'll go ahead and. Go ahead and line up our first bolt here. Swing it back. There we go. So, got this one in. I'm pretty sure that was pointing about right here. That's where we're going to leave it. And honestly, the um, direction here looks about right as well so we'll go ahead and get this sort of sort of uh, on
All right, so that's, that's sort of in there. We'll go ahead and, and get our uh, other bolts set up here. That's a little too tight, actually. Gotta run our spline bolt here. this up again so we got enough wiggle room to uh, get our yeah get our spline bolt in here hello spiny let's tap it through all right so now we got enough where now we can pull it out I'm gonna put some um, silicone on those so they'll help it slide in and then we'll go ahead and put our antecedents here and we can go ahead and just pull that in just like a wheel stud basically we looks like we beat out that edge a little much. It was a little bit tricky to get the uh, um, bolt over the top of that. So that's one thing to watch for when it's tapping like that. And another thing too, since we do have the flat edge, oh, it's 15. Hey. Hey oh, it was 18, I'm sorry. Alright, so pull that straight as we slide it in. See if you can see it there. Yeah, it looks like everything is centered up. Slide in. And the silicones, it might help getting them back out, which hopefully will be a while before we need to do that. That's basically what we're doing there. Go ahead and finish her up. We need that at the bottom out uh, before we finish up. Uh, and this side should be easier, this will be going down. How about that torque? got that to adjust as well. So I have to figure that out. have space here between so we haven't bottomed out you know pressed it all the way in because our shoulders here aren't um, complete so we'll get it bottomed out in the wall here 
Pampasin. Alright, so we go ahead and get our pin in here. So our splines move it in. Let's go ahead and tighten this down a little bit here. Finish down here in the bottom. space here so we can close get this loose here a little bit you need this to be tight first so Pretty good to me. We'll leave that there for a minute. Finish our adjustment here. Oh. She pardon the burp. Pretty good. Check our lower here. It all looks like the fitment's pretty nice and even. Watch for that. All right. I like it. Pretty crazy to think that everything just kind of rotates up there. That's pretty amazing. Looks like it's a pretty tight setup at the moment. Look at that. Oh no, the bows is dying. I gotta get a charger for the bows. Yeah, that's pretty freaky to think what all works to make it steer huh pretty amazing clearances look good here we're just looking at that on our um on our new ball joints everything looks like it's stock so but yeah so the steering should probably firm up a little bit better too having those new 
bearing plates. So yeah, it's I see what cars are a marvel. I do not, I am not an expert at cars whatsoever. I pretty immature. But it's it's pretty amazing what all is involved in these things. So alright. Got that done. I'm not gonna mess with this yet until we got our tie rod in. But uh, yeah, making some making some progress. Oh.